Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Assimilate Inc. And I'm back again with another Scratch tutorial. And in this lesson, we're talking Avid Daily's workflow. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I've been a Media Composer editor for a long time. And one thing that Media Composer does not do well, and that's transcoding. To be honest, it's transcode times are just brutally slow. So I'm always looking for the next best solution for doing my dailies work. And I'm gonna be honest with you, Scratch has probably the best dailies workflow not only because it's super simple and super fast, but it's also gonna give you the most metadata information possible in the transfer from Scratch to Media Composer. All right, so as you can see, we are in Scratch 9.1, and what I've done is I've set up a scope timeline. Now, the reason I've set up a scope timeline at 2048 by 858 at 23, 976 frames per second is because in the Avid Daily's workflow, we're making an assumption that we're going from a larger than HD frame size to an HD frame size, because that's why we're creating this Daily's workflow. Now, what I'm going to do is jump into the render module to show you that when we have our timeline selected, I come to my Avid Daily's output template preset and I simply apply it. I wanna show you what's going on here. So what we basically have is our timeline, which then will go to a burn-in node. Now in this burn-in node, if I select it, you'll see we are getting information in here like the source file name, the source's name, the source's time code, the audio file, sound roll if available, and the audio time code. Now I wanna point out that this burn-in is actually sitting over top of the image, which is important to see when you then see what my alternate Avid workflow is. All right, so let's come back to the render module. You'll see now that at this point, we branch off into two separate workflows. One will create us some preview files, some preview H.264 MP4 files at 720p with a watermark, which for the purpose of what we're doing today, I don't need, so I'm just gonna remove that. On the other branch, the current branch, what we now have is we have our burn in at 2048, we've got a reframe to HD, and then an encode to DNX HD 36. So let's take a look at our reframe HD node just to see what's going on with this. And you'll notice that if I zoom back just a little bit here, let's make sure I click on the interface here. I'm gonna hold Option or Alt down to zoom back. I'm gonna basically hold the space bar to pan around and you'll see that now that burn in information is laid in over top of the image because it was applied before the transform node. Now for me personally, when I'm doing this type of workflow, I like to have that information appear in the letterbox. So in just a second, I'm gonna show you a slightly different workflow that you can get in and do to get this information to appear in the letterbox. All right, let's head back to render. Let's head back to DNX HD 36 just to show you that what's gonna happen here is that currently that media is gonna be exported onto my internal hard drive, which we're going to change. And it's going to be put into a folder hierarchy of the construct name, then a folder called Avid, then the event number, and then the source's name, and then dot extension, okay? And you can see a little sample of that right above it. Now, for the purpose of what I'm doing, I'm not gonna have this entire thing here. I think what I'm gonna do is basically just have a folder created called Avid, like such, perfect. I'm gonna say okay. And you can see now that what's gonna happen when I add this to the render queue is when I hit render, a folder is gonna be created called Avid, and then the files are going to be placed in there, all right? Now, what I would also do in this case is I'd come to the media location, I'd send it to my media drive, I'd say select, so this way a new folder is gonna be created on my external media drive, all the files are gonna be put in there, all right? Now, let's stop for one second because like I said, this is not the workflow that I want. What I would really rather do is have the reframe happen first and then the burn-in happen after that. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this workflow and luckily enough, I have my own Kevin's Avid Dailies workflow that we're going to apply. You'll see there's my reformat, there's my burn-in, there's my encode. So if I come down to the burn-in node and I select it, I've actually increased the size of that metadata burn-in information and it now appears inside of the letterbox. So all I now need to do is I'm gonna come down to my DNX HD MXF node. You'll see that if I navigate over here to the format settings, just to double check, 1080p, 23976, DNX HD 36, we want to make sure that those two audio channels are there and that we're not exporting as MXF OP1A, but MXF OP Atom with Avid in brackets. So we are now all set to go, assuming that our output location is correct. 
what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to set that to be, let's go to our volumes, let's go to media one, I'm just going to say select, and we could then add this to the render queue, simply come in, select, and then say start. Now, I've actually already exported this media for us to work with, so we don't have to sit through that whole process. What I'm going to do is simply hide out of scratch, and I'm going to navigate over to Media 1. I'm going to come to the folder that I exported that media to earlier, which was Avid Daily's Day 1. Now, of course, this does beg the question, why did I export this as MXF Media as opposed to exporting this as QuickTime MOV with a DNX HD 36 codec? Because most people think that that's what the logical workflow would be. The reason that we chose MXF files is they can contain lots of metadata information. And as you know, and I know because you hear me say it all the time, Scratch is a metadata machine. It has tons of metadata information that will obviously be carried with the files that you bring into it, plus metadata that you can input yourself. And pretty much all of that is going to transfer over from Scratch to Media Composer using these MXF files as the bridge. So now, of course, that does beg the question, how do we get this footage into Media Composer? Well, let me show you. I'm going to take one step back, and I have my Avid Media Files folder right here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove that number two folder, and I'm going to come in here, and I'm just going to create a folder called Avid Dailies Day 1. All right, and we can now step back. I can now take all of this information from here take it, drag it, and drop it right into there, and we should be all set to go. However, when I Command or Alt and Tab into Media Composer, you'll now see that I really don't have any way to get this media in here. You might be thinking that I'm going to come to Input, to Source Browser, or to Import Media, and then we'd be all set to go. What's important to keep in mind if you're new to Avid or you don't use Avid very much is the way that Avid stores its media is in folders called number, in this case number one, and you'll see there is the video files, and if there's any audio files in here, they'll obviously be tagged as A1 or A2. Now the other issue that we had was when we went into Media Composer with this folder called Avid Dailies Day 1, Media Composer didn't rebuild the database. Let's switch the name of this folder to be simply 2. Once I Command or Alt and Tab back into Avid Media Composer, you'll see Media Composer will immediately rebuild the database. Now again, you might be thinking, okay, Kevl, are we going to import or use the source browser to get to this footage? We're not going to do either of that. I'm going to Command or Alt and Tab back to the desktop. Now when I step into this folder, not only does it contain all of my media, but it contains those two index files as well. Now you'll notice that they are two very different sizes. One is 300 kilobytes, one is 5 kilobytes. So we want the MMOB database file. And what we're going to do is we're simply going to take that database file and I'm going to drag it and drop it into my bin. Now, not only is this a fantastic workflow, as you can see, we have our media in here with all of our, and I'm just going to switch over to a single composer window here. Perfect. And what we're going to do here is I should actually double click on this and stick it into a timeline just so we can see it on a single composer window like such. Not only do we get the burn in appearing exactly the way that we had it in Scratch, but more importantly, if I drag the window over, take a look at the absolute staggering amount of metadata information that has been transferred over from Scratch into Media Composer. Now the big problem with this is that if you start switching views, you're going to lose this information. But I don't want to lose this information. I'm going to save it as Scratch. Let's just get rid of clips here. Scratch metadata. And I'm going to say OK. So this way, when I switch to a different view, like my clips view, and I go in and do whatever I need to do, at any time, I can simply switch back to my Scratch metadata view come in and get whatever information I happen to need in whatever column is here. And keep in mind, you're also going to get information here like audio timecode information as well as source role. And even if I scroll all the way over here to the right, you even get the circle take information included as well. Now, also keep in mind that if you follow along with any of my tutorials, you'll know all about the scene take updater panel and any information that you enter there, of course, will be tagged into the metadata unless it's automatically added through external audio 
and all that information will be transferred over through the MXF file as well. All right, that brings us to the end of our lesson. Now, I want to remind you, we were working in Scratch 9.1, and if you need more information about this release, you can check out the link you see on the screen right now, and don't worry, we've included it in the notes below this tutorial, so you can get there lightning fast. And don't forget, for everything Scratch and Assimilate related, you can check us out on the web at www.assimilateinc.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.